Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the brave 
arms. Color guards, post your colors. Color guard, present arms. Order arms, right and left face. Forward march. But guess what? It took another 30 years for Jamaican slaves to be fully freed from the shackles of slavery. But yet, they were still not free from a commonwealth dependency. Like many before us, through the annals of time, numerous people made our independence their heart's mission. Taki, Nanny of the Maroons, Paul Bogle, Marcus Garvey, Samuel Sharp, George William Gordon, Norman Manley, and Sir Alexander Bustamante gave their lives so that we could, from such a lick of place, a mere dot panamap, we had a people where its culture doubly fascinated and dominates the world today. It was only a matter of time before we took the stand to be fully independent on August 6, 1962. Therefore, today, August 6, 2022, after 400 years of slavery, 200 years of active rebellion, 60 years of independence, we thank you for standing proud and wearing your colors of black, green, and gold. In solidarity with the Jamaican diaspora locally and globally, together we will worship, celebrate, and reignite our nation to greatness by first thanking God for what he has done and will continue to do as he guides this little Botalawa country. As you worship today, please keep a prayer in your hearts for our, our island home, Jamaica. Right now, please stand with me as we sing the Jamaican National Anthem.
Thank you. Be seated. Seated. Thank you. Please be seated. Good morning, one and all. Welcome to our independence celebration. Some of the visitors that traveled with us to the stadium and some met us here. Welcome. I have some names on here and I'm going to let you know who are our special visitors with, her, with us here today. We have Anika Humphrey. She's from our Florida State representative. Denise Grant, our commissioner. Mr. Dale Hone is in the house. Miss Hazel Rogers. All right. We thank you for being with us today. And you know, anytime you find a Jamaican that speaks is spooky, you want to know if they're true Jamaicans, get them upset. That's all I'm going to say. Get them upset. You can't speak is spooky. All right, so we're moving on to our medical persons. Dr. Michael Douglas, give him a big up. Thank you, Dr. Douglas, for being with us here today. And Marcia Healthcare, she's in the house. All right. And then when you cannot cure them, we have Mac White's Funeral Home Services. Then after that, we have our preachers. Pastor Liebert, are you in the house? Oh. Then we have Elder Noel Neville Williams and Brother Irvin Hudson. Then those that traveled on the bus, we must thank Gold Star Transportation for bringing us. And then we have, when we're not feeling so good and the doctor can't help us, we find everything we need in BDC East, East West Indian food store. And then, when you have the medicine, you need like a patty for wash it down. And we thank Gold Cross for being here. Then, we have the educators, because your can, head can't dry, you have to have like a something in the head. So we thank Ms. Lana Patterson Grant, Mr. Mark Spence, Charlie Port, I'm sorry, Chalet? Chalet. Chalet, thank you. Portier Forbes, the item not so good, you know, take time with me. And Dwayne Spence. That is when you get in trouble, all of them take care of you. So you don't get the clean clean, I'm just saying. And then last but not least, from Yard, the Jamaican Ex-Police Association and the City of Lauderhill Police. We thank you. We thank you for visiting with us today. And then, hold on, let me go in on my bag. Hold on. And we have Rashid Baith, ba ba our community liaison. Thank you for being here with us. All right, so we're going to do this real, real fast. For all those who travel on the bus and then the rest of us that met here, let's see who is here in the house. All the people them from Hanover. St. Elizabeth. St. James, Trelawney, West Milan, Clarendon, Manchester, St. Anne, St. Catherine, St. Mary. All right, may I come, may I come. Kingston, Portland, St. Andrew, and St. Thomas. Thank you all for being here. May you not leave here the same way you came in. Leave with a blessing. May God bless you all. Thank you. Drum corps. Right and left. Face. At a half step. 
forward, march. and girls. How are you today? Good, good, good. I'm here to tell you a story that happened a very long, long time ago in the parish of St. Andrew. Let me see those, the hands of those who are from St. Andrew. Just a few of us. Anyway, it takes place in a little district called Maryland. Of course, in Jamaica, you know, we have a lot of little districts. We have even one they call Dallas Castle. We have one named Oz the Light. We have one named Guava Gap, and so many others. But this one takes place in a little town, a little countryside called Maryland. There was a mother and a father with five children. No, they just moved from Kingston to the hills of St. Andrew. And of course, there was no light at the time in the house. Oops. Fix this for me. So they have this lamb they call Home Sweet Home. Let me see the hands of those who know Home Sweet Home. Now, um, they put something in there that's called um, kerosene oil. Yes. All right. So they put a kerosene oil in it, and they light it, and they'll show light all through the house. So it so happened that this particular day, evening was getting dark, and so the mother had to light the home sweet home. Yes. And she went outside for a while, when she looked inside the house, she saw this bright light. And so she said to herself, but this could not be a normal light. So she ran inside. When she looked, she saw the bed on fire. Now, this particular bed has a beautiful spread that it's called Chanel spread. Let me see how those who know Chanel spread. Yes. So the Chanel spread was on the bed. There was a little baby on the bed, and there was a little girl standing looking at the, the bed ablaze. So mommy went in quickly, and she got something, and she put the light out. Guess what happened, boys and girls? The bigger girl climbed on the chair. The lamp was on the table. She climbed on the chair, dropped, put a piece of paper in the lamp, and as soon as the cat fell, she dropped it on the ground, and sad to say, it catch the sheet. The spread, sorry. Of course, mother to talk to her about not doing that anymore. Now, boys and girls, I know today you don't have that to deal with because we have electric light all through the house, right? So you just put a switch. But then, mom might have to use a high iron or she'll cook on the stove. So be careful. Don't go near those things because you will get burned. And so, 
mommy had to set up her and give God thanks for taking care of the situation at that time. Now, boys and girls, that was my two children and my two girls. <laughs> Tanya was the baby. You all know Tanya? Yeah. And Lisa was the other girl. She was the one that brought the paper in there. And so um, I'm so grateful today. They're alive and well. Tanya has two children of her own. Lisa has two children of her own. So God has been good to me. Boys and girls, God has been good to each and every one of you. And he's always looking out for you. Let every lamb be burning bright. The darkest hour is nearing. The darkest hour of light appear before the Lord's appearing. Then trim your lamps, my brethren dear. Then trim your lamps with godly fear. The master's coming draws near. Let every love be burning. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for Jesus, your son. We thank you for the light of the world. Help us to be faithful. Bless all these boys and girls. Bless their parents. Continue to provide for them. Lord, they're going back to school very soon. Be with them, Lord, and travel with them as they go each day. Bless the teachers that are going to take care of them. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord, let me hear you say hallelujah. hallelujah. No, no, don't sound happy at all. Let me hear you say hallelujah. hallelujah. We look nice, don't. We want to thank uh, Nana for the outfits. We're here to truly celebrate. And how can we celebrate 60 years without giving God the praise? Am I right? So as we're about to do our praise and worship, I want you to stand with me because we're not going to give God any weak praise. That's right. We're not going to give him any tired Amen. praise. We're going to give him the praise Amen. he deserves. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, what singing. Yes. Oh. in the sky redemption
seated in the presence of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord, the Bible says we worship him with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, songs of deliverance. And we are so glad that you have taken the time to be here. I want to add my welcome to that which has already been given as we celebrate the goodness of God and reflect on the 60 years of independence. Now, I, I have to say, as someone who was born a Brit, I, I usually have mixed feelings when they talk about 4th of July independence. 
But when we talk about Jamaica independence, it's a totally different thing. And we are so glad that not only uh, Jamaica has its independence, but we are so glad that over 2,000 years ago, the sun sets, set us free. And who the sun sets free is free indeed. And so we are glad, we are excited, we are thrilled to be able to share this time of worship with you. Uh, Lauder Hill Church is a unique church, a church that is uh, able to worship and praise God from the very youngest of us to the most, most senior of us. And we are excited today to have our centurion in the house. I was told that she's here. Let me see if uh, Sister Rita uh, Anglin is here. Let me see. Is she here? All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Our centurion, we celebrate it. I, I came back off my sabbatical just to be there for that wonderful celebration. And we are so glad, Sister Anglin, to have you uh, with us. A very proud Jamaican. And look at her, how colorful and stylish she looks, as always. And we are so excited. So there is so much more that we want to say. We want to say welcome to our guests and dignitaries, uh, those leaders in our community and all those who have served us here in uh, Lauder Hill and in Broward County in the state of Florida. Uh, so ably we are very grateful for your presence here today and your time of worship with us we look forward to what god is going to do i should say i'm pastor gary gordon uh, I, I i'm now the returned pastor of the uh, lord of hill seven Adventist church have having been on uh, three months uh, sabbatical and uh, we'll say more about that later but i just want to thank my the assistant pastor pastor milton palmer for his uh, faithful service and uh, we'll say we'll say much more about that right now the this is gg speaking to you but we have a message uh from the big gg at this time thank you so much fellow jamaicans at home and in the diaspora this 60th anniversary of our independence today marks a very special milestone. Just a moment, we're going to get that volume up for us. It provides an ideal opportunity for us to reflect on our journey as a nation and aspire to a future of even greater success for generations to come. The first raising of the black, green and gold flag of our newly independent country was for us a new day of hope in our history. I am proud and honored to be part of this bold and resilient nation. In reflecting on our six decades of self-governance and national development, we have many achievements in our short history of which we should be proud. We have a stable democracy that has allowed us to transfer power successfully when the people wish from one political party to another without any coup. We have upheld the rule of law and rejected injustice and abuse. We have respected, embraced, and followed the constitution which was carefully crafted by our forefathers. We have made outstanding contributions to the visual and performing arts, culture, sports, education, tourism, medicine, research and development, science and technology, international relations, global peace initiatives, advocacy on behalf of developing countries, and human rights. Our young people, the future of our sovereignty, are leading within the halls of our development and in existing industries, while building new ones to adapt to the challenges and demands of the changing times. They, as the custodians of Jamaica's growing legacy, should be given space to collaborate, learn, celebrate, and be celebrated. As we bask in the glow of this diamond jubilee, there remains the shadow of pandemics, social inequities, economic turmoil, and escalating crime and violence that have threatened our very being. We cannot allow the life of our nation to be drained, as that would sink us into despair and lawlessness. Just as our four parents showed admirable tenacity and courage, we too should be courageous 
and come together as one nation under God, united in our shared goal of making our country a successful nation. Our theme for this celebration inspires us to ignite the values that guarantee success. Among them, honesty, integrity, trust, kindness, respect for each other, and respect for life. Jamaica is poised now more than ever to actualize the dreams and hopes of our forefathers who fought for emancipation and political independence. Our people are now more mature and responsive to the challenges, so solid faith in our nation should strengthen the foundations as we move forward. In continuing our journey, we are capable of using what is right with Jamaica to fix what is wrong and be the best of what we can be. Our first national hero, the right excellent Marcus Garvey, stressed the point to us, and I quote, we have a beautiful history and we shall create another in the future that will astonish the world, end of quote. Let us all rise to the challenge and play our part to advance Jamaica and by extension, the whole human race. I encourage everyone to embrace the Jubilee call to action in reigniting a nation for greatness. I wish for everyone a happy independence. God bless you and bless Jamaica land we love. Taking what is right with our country to fix the wrongs in and out of our country, a statement that was just made by His Excellency. At this point in time, we would like to use this season to recognize members of the Jamaican diaspora and those who are also friends to the island's people of what they have been doing to take that bright spark and to show that Jamaicans are still just as great a yard as they are abroad. So at this point in time, we are going to award these people, recognize them. It's going to be kind of a lot of a movement going on today, so please make sure that you just bear with us as we try to be efficient as best as possible in this moment. And what we ask our awardees and those who are receiving something from us, that you will literally, you'll walk from up this side as well, you'll be awarded some kind of a lanyard as well, shake the hand of the pastor, and then you'll be helped back down here in the center aisle, kind of keep you on this side. And in the same time as this is being done, we will also have those who are announcing, so please bear with us as we go through this process. We will do them in the order of, first, we'll recognize the different fields. I'm sorry for my papers all over the place, but here it is. We'll first recognize those in government, then medical and health care, evangelism and spiritual leaders, then we'll do business, and then education, and we will look at the litigious group of people as well, along with those who are civil servants who serve and protect us here. 
So once again, awardees, as you hear your names, please stand. We'll read a brief bio that you sent us. You will walk along. You'll be guided along this periphery, and then you'll receive the medal and your certificate, and then you'll be escorted down, assisted by our deacon. All right. So at this point in time, we'll get started first with government, and these people will be resent, who are representing government: Anika Umfroy, <laughs> Denise Grant, and Hazel Rogers. Anika Amfroy. Okay, thank you. Yes, please help her down. Oh, take your time, please, please, please. Denise Grant. Thank you. And next we have Miss Hazel Rogers. <laughs> Hazel Rogers was born in Kingston, Jamaica, and a member of the Florida House of Representatives. She spent 25 years of her life in public service. The first person from an English-speaking Caribbean American community, she has been elected in office. And as you all know, at this point in time, she's also. Running for office in the primary elections, Miss Hazel Rogers. Next, we will go through medical and healthcare, and here we have Dr. Michael Douglas and Marcia's Healthcare. Dr. Michael Douglas is a chiropractor. And he is a community advocate for physical health, providing chiropractic services to Caribbean population in Lauder Hill for over 30 years. His passion for fitness and Jamaican athletes has led Dr. Douglas to travel at his own expense to provide free chiropractic services to our Jamaican athletes, and he has served them for many years. He has met the likes of Usain Bolt, Asafa Powell, Yoan Blake, Nesta Clark, and Shellyan, of course. Thank you, Dr. Douglas. Marcia Gordon, representing Marcia's Healthcare Registry Incorporated for more than 15 years, has provided employment, mentorship to the South Florida community, also with, with networking with Beulah Land Ministries in Jamaica to provide housing for children suffering from AIDS. Thank you, Marcia Gordon, representing Marcia's Healthcare Registry. Next, we will we'll award those in business. We have here, no, sorry, in evangelism and spiritual leaders. We have Pastor Leroy Lyburn. We are recognizing him. Is he here today? Elder Neville Williams, we're also recognizing him. We'll give those awards to them as well. And representing Pastor Lyburn, we have here our own sister, Lydia Mason, who will be taking the award on his behalf. Pastor Lyburn served in Jamaica Defense Force, of course, oh, and was a part of the Hammond Barracks headquarters, and of course, you know he pastored this church for over 20 years, making a flagship church in our community. <laughs> Next, uh, Elder Williams. Um, we will give his award to his representative. We have a hand for him, please. And next we have our own brother, Irvin Hudson. He is one of our Staluit members here, our treasurer, and also our, in the Pathfinder Ministries. He is escorted by, well, he wants to be escorted by Sister Tamar Bins, but please welcome to the stage here our own Irvin Hudson. He is from Trelawney, Jamaica, product of Northern Caribbean University. He served as a financial controller for the Caribbean islands, worked as an accountant in the investment and money-making division at Wall Street in New York. He's a teacher and mentor with 58 years of outstanding leadership. Please take down Mr. Hervin Hudson. 
And then next, we will recognize those who serve in education. And we have here in our list Sister Lana Patterson Grant, an educator, and of course, Mark Spence, who's an educator and a director. Please come forward. And you have too many notes. That's what happens. Please stand for a second here, Educator Lana Patterson Grant. She's from Port Antonia, Jamaica. She has served and taught for what? Mathematics for over 42 years. And one thing that she has done, one thing she speaks of greatly, is that she has always made sure she had 100% pass rate, 100% pass rate when it comes to her students. So please put your hands together for this high-impact teacher, Teacher of the Year, Broward County Math Teacher of the Year, and of course, this is Miss Lana Patterson Grant. And next, we have our educator, Mark Anthony Spence. He is director owner of Paradise Child Care Center. Mark believes in the holistic development of the child and has spent many years in early childhood education. He holds a bachelor's degree in health services administration from FAU. And of course, he was the first director here at our own community child care center. Yes, he was. And Mark selflessly puts his, um, his, his hold to open and establish his own child care center. And of course, we thank him as always. And he is running, what, what, what is that? He's running too? Oh, okay. So you heard that out of his, his own mouth as well. Thank you so much for what you have done for us, Mr. Mark Spence. And now we'll go to the litigious servants of our group, and that will be attorney Shalay Porter-Forbes, along with Duane Spence. <laughs> Ms. Shalay Porter-Forbes um, was born in Montego Bay, Jamaica, a practicing attorney for over 11 years who provides legal assistance to indigenous members of the community. Shalay is a litigator who is driven by client-focused advocacy, coupled with exceptional legal knowledge and skills. She has a deep passion for serving the members of the community by providing quality legal service, and she has made constant and outstanding financial contribution to the youth and the Pathfinder Ministry, Ms. Sister Lay Porter-Forbes. Duane Spence is also dear and near to our hearts. He is the sibling to Mark Spence. He's assistant city attorney at the city of Fort Lauderdale, a graduate of Nova South Eastern University, Shepherd Board Law Center. He's a member of the executive community, Upper Gold um, Coast Region and Florida Conference of Semi Adventists. It's a long thing. And of course, he advocates for youth, youth adult ministries as well. Thank you so much for your service, Mr. Spence. And next on this list of those who we will be um, recognizing are those who are civil servants, those who serve and protect us. And we would like to, I think we have a representative here from the Jamaica Ex-Police Association. Is that person here? Thank you, sir. And then we also have a representative here from the city of Lauder Hill Police. If they can make their way forward, that would be very helpful as well for us. Now, the Jamaica Ex-Police Association, JIPA, former police officers of Jamaica Constabulary Force, and of course, they sponsor quite a few projects in Jamaica from year to year, such as school building programs and community centers. Thank you so much for this group and what they are doing for us in this island and beyond. And this is Rashid Boss. Yes. Yes, he's here from, from the, from the Lauder Hill, city of Lauder Hill Police. You know this gentleman. He's always here sharing in with us, and we thank you so much for what you are doing for the community as you take, as you serve and protect us all. Please make sure you tell that to the people, to the police um, members as well. Thank you so very much. And I think from my list, if I made a good run of it, that should be everyone. But we know that there are others, and please make sure that every year when we are trying to recognize community members, please make sure you, you tell us who, who they are, because we know that there are more people who are doing great things beyond the scope of this place. Yes, sir. And I think, who else? 
And Mac White, oh God, how could I forget Mac White? And from Mac White's Funeral Services, we have a representative here, and I think it's no other than our own LFD and singer and person who welcomed us as well. Sister Roxine McIntosh, and they provide exceptional ser services for those that we celebrate the lives of those who are departed, and those of you who know that they have done community work here as well. So I want to thank um, Albert McMahon's Funeral Services for what they do for us in this community as well. Please be careful. Do I have everyone now? Thank you. Th oh, thank you so very much. Please continue to enjoy the rest of our service. Uh, the very faithful service of Gold Star Transportation, Sister Sadia, at this time. Thank you. And Brother and Sister Mullins, wherever you are, we want to say thank you again. God bless you. Thank you. our hearts for prayer.
invite the congregation to stand with me. And then I want to ask you to get into the attitude of prayer. And we will be supplicating the Supreme. Bow your heads with me and close your eyes. Thank you. Almighty God, our Father, we approach your throne at this moment. And we just want to recognize and pause to acknowledge your presence in our midst. As we worship today, we ask that thou will accept our worship. And I have no doubt that in store for each and every one of us, whether we're here in person or we're online, I know there's a blessing in store for all of us. So we ask the Lord that thou will prepare our hearts to receive that blessing. Today we meet to celebrate thy holy Sabbath and also the historical events for the past 60 years of our independence in our home country, Jamaica. We pray the Lord that thou will continue to lead that country in particular. And wherever we are throughout the world, remind us, help us to recognize where we are from. Father, today we want to Thank you for this opportunity of bringing our community together with all our guests who are here. Years ago, they had no idea they would be here this morning, but Lord, you know everything. And so we thank you for bringing them here. We ask that they will endure on each one the strength to lead in whatever area they're assigned. Bless their leadership and give them strength as they lead. Help them, Lord, to get rid of that little word, self, and acknowledge that we are all servants, serving for a cause. And today, Lord, as we celebrate this milestone, we want to recognize and acknowledge everyone within the hearing of my voice. Lord, we ask for the forgiveness of our sins. And we ask that thou will keep us focused because you promise that you will return. So, Father, we just ask that you will prepare us for that day so that when you shall appear, we will be ready to go home with you. We have many people who are sick among us too. We ask that thou will touch them with a the healing hand. And those who are mourning the loss of loved one, we ask that thou will comfort them. And all of us who are here today to worship, we pray that you will accept our worship. And we'll endure that with that blessing that is in store. Remember our young people. Remember those who are here serving in whatever capacity they are serving. Remember a pastor who has just returned from his vacation. We ask that they will continue to lead him so that he can lead us aright. Lord, we ask that as we worship week after week, we will find ourselves closer drawn to thee. So Lord, in your name we pray, and we ask that thou will continue to be with us, to lead and direct. Prepare us, we pray, for that day, so that when you shall come, we will be ready to go home with you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for answering our prayer.
because we ask all these mercies in no other name but in your name let the church say amen thank you you may be seated church we've been on a stewardship journey for most of this year and as our deacons come forward to wait on us for our tithes and offering it is oftentimes said that the closer the closest we ever get to God is when we give let us pray loving God our saving our king how grateful and thankful we are that, oh God, you have blessed us with the means of an income. And as we come now to participate in giving, we pray, oh Lord, that your blessing will be poured out on us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The purpose of the church is to help both the church members and the community. We have enough to give thanks for, right? 60 years. So with that said, right now, the basket is almost empty. And if all of we know a Jamaican language, then say one one cocoa full the basket. So right now it's time to return the one one cocoa because we need the basket to fill up. Actually, I defer from um, Dwight. I think we need to bring all the cocos um, come. And today is a day to return all the cocoa you have stored up so whether you have it stored up in high places or low places bring it yes you know the, the, the purse the tread bag you know and your other places <laughs> under the mattress but you know those at home you know go for the wherever you have it at home you know these ones that in church you know we are decent so we have it in the purses and the handbag right the ones at home have it in the locker closet and the mattress hide and you know so bring it out you know and there's ways to give just send it come because like the band said we need the cocoa for the basket for full so the one one cocoa bring all of them come so we can help the community and the church right and for those of you online who are faithful to give online don't forget we have cash app we have our advent give and we have um several electronic ways you can give I personally love giving online because it means I am never late with my giving because I'm able with a few clicks on my phone and my tithes and offerings are given. So I want to encourage you all, those of you visiting with us, those of us who are regular members, bring all those cocos in because we need them. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. It is truly an honor to be with you here this morning. Happy Sabbath. My name is Anika Umfroy. I am the state representative for House District 95. I would like to thank Pastor Gordon and Elder Marlene Hunt for the opportunity to be here today. I will be reading from Deuteronomy 6, starting with 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. 
and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them with thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by thy way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest, thou risest up. Verse 8, And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thy eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of their house and their gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land, which he sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and to give thee great and godly cities, which thou buildest not. And the house is full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wilt dig, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou planteth not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Thou be aware, lest thou forget thy Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear thy Lord thy God and serve him, and thou swear by his name. Verse 14. Ye shall not go after other gods, of the gods of the people which are round about you. Final verse 15. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God, God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Thou the reading of God's word. Again, I am Commissioner Denise Grant from the beautiful city of Lauder Hill. Thank you, Pastor Gordon, and of course, the executive team here, all the ministers and everyone in their respective places for giving us this opportunity to read from the word of God. Yes. It's been a long, long time. 2,649,600 seconds. 44,160 minutes. 736 hours. 92 days since our pastor has been absent. Today, we just want to welcome him back. And I know he's well rested. I know that the Lord has blessed him with a message for us today. He has come back fortified ready to work as a matter of fact i know he could sprint uh, maybe a hundred in a few minutes that's how well he has been rested so today we just want to welcome pastor back and to thank him even for the time he has been away because so much has been done and we thank God for everything so God has laid a message on his heart for us today and I encourage each and every one of us just to breathe a word of prayer focus on Christ don't see that big tall man see Jesus and as you see him you will 
be blessed just before pastor comes the praise team will sing for us But we just wanted to do a quick interruption and a mild shift of the atmosphere. We just beg your quick attention. We want to do a little amendment. 
and just recognize some of our local awardees here as well. Now, businesses, we just did not get a chance to uh, mention that we did and we will be awarding Better Sea East West Indian Food, is right beside us as well. We'll be giving them an award as well for their service to the community, along with Golden Crust Bakery. And I'm sure you also heard Pastor that also said um, um, Gold Star Transportation Services. But we have some local church family, and now we have some representative here for them. We'd like to recognize them at this time. Elder Neville Williams, and accepting on his behalf, should be Elder Floyd Wilson. Is he here? Floyd Wilson, he come and for, accept for Elder Neville Williams. I know he stepped out earlier with the um, offertory. And then we also wanted to officially recognize, I know you heard her name being called this morning, the educator for over 60-something years and centenarian, Rita A. Richards Anglin. I don't know if she will want to walk here, but if someone could come on her behalf, that she could receive an award as well. Sister Rita A. Richards Anglin. She can send a representative as well quickly, and we could pass that on as well for her. We want to recognize her. And if she cannot make it here, we can just put it to the side, ladies, and then we'll award her later. I know she's trying to get information down there as I see her. But we also wanted to recognize, we couldn't do it then because they were up on the stage with us. Thank you. She'll write it now for us. Thank you. And then uh, Dale Holness was also here earlier, and we wanted to award him with something as well. I know he left word that you'll be picking up on his behalf as well, Mr. Mike's, um, Mark Spence. But we also wanted to know that we have a little something-something for him too, so we didn't want to not mention his name. You saw his picture flash on the screen, so we have something for him as well. So as we're walking it down to Sister Rita Richards Anglin, thank you, thank you for that clap. There it is. We also now wanted to recognize three stalwart of men to us, and we couldn't do it because they were actually here themselves. So they never knew so we had something planned for them too, right? So we want to surprise them a little bit. So here it is. First of all, we want to recognize the leadership of an awesome educator, and that is our head elder, well, associate head elder, um, Dr. Ezra Quarry. So if he could make his way forward, we have something, something for you as well. I don't know where he went. He was here earlier. He just prayed. And while he's making his way, serving him and working side by side, especially when our pastor was not here, was our standing place pastor. And that is our head elder, um, Milton Palmer, as well. <laughs> Wanted to make sure you recognize him. And I knew he was wondering what was going on, but we couldn't tell him the little secret, so we wanted to recognize him as well for all that he has done. And for the past three months, he has worked tirelessly as our associate, well, as our standing place pastor, having big shoes to fill uh, as he did his job as well. So I wanted to let them know that we really recognize them for their service and their leadership as well. And. So it just says clearly, just a little something, something on it, it is an award to them, just recognizing their many contributions and faithful service to the advancement of our own local congregation. So thank you, Dr. Quarry. And we're pinning the head elder. And a little gift back for you as well. Please take that, take your time. So surprising, can we hold the gift right? But uh, take your time, go down, take your time. All right, there you go. And we're trying to calm down Elder Palmer because he was about telling us that we cannot break service again, but now he's calm. And there he is, thank you. Surprised as well. So we had to break in. <laughs> Thank you for your service. And, uh, you know, he did not know that he's a part of it, too, but our own pastor, Gary Gordon. All right, yes, indeed. <laughs> 
first day back on the job after three months away, and he's right smack in the mix of things as well. We could not let him go ahead and preach here today without recognizing his leadership, of course, all that he has done for us, even during the pandemic, and brought us forward as well. So we want to go ahead and pin him so that he can have a, a touch of us on his shoulder as he, he preaches today. Give him a little pin as well. And also, what we'll, we'll have for him again? Anything else? But a little bit later, we'll have something again to give him as well. But we just wanted to recognize him for all he has done for this congregation as well. Thank you so very much for allowing us to break in. Please continue to enjoy the rest of this worship. We here at Lauder Hill believe very much that we ought to give uh, persons their flowers while they can smell them, their roses, right? And recognitions and appreciation is so important to us as a family. And very, we are also great believers in celebrating our culture and our heritage, both as uh, Caribbeans, Jamaicans, uh, African Americans, uh, whatever term we'd like to use, because we are a part of this community and the contributions that have been made uh, through us and uh, people who look like us ought not to be ignored and the church ought to be a place in which it is recognized, not only uh, spiritually but socially as part of the wider community. And so today, is a time for us to give thanks. And we also want to say that there, this is one of many such that we will do from time to time. There are many of you not formally recognized today who serve the church and its community very faithfully. And uh, we also want to say that we appreciate you and all that you do. See so many faces here that are part of the history and legacy of our church here in Lauder Hill. Uh, really good to see your brother and sister Lewis here. Thank you for being with us and the family, even having a part of uh, our program here on today. Um, and so we're so grateful, we're so grateful for, for you taking that journey down from the uh, Palm Beach County to be with us. Thank you so much. So we I want to say that we are back and raring to go. There is so much I'd like to share with you about my uh, trip to the UK and other places. Um, but we are going to get into the word as we just have a brief word. Remember I used to say that before on sabbatical, right? It's a short word for us, all right? So I've been practicing. I've been practicing. So we're going to have a brief word for us on today, uh, hear what the Lord has to say to us. Thank you uh, uh, for the wonderful scripture reading uh, from our servants and our friends in the community. We're so uh, blessed, Denise and Anika, for your service. Thank you, and all of you, our honorees. We're so grateful. We recognize that we cannot do this alone, and so. We need the power of Almighty God to be with us. And uh, I want just to read uh, by way of uh, introduction the first uh, three verses of our text that was read to us, uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6 and um, reading from verse 1. 
Now this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgment which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess, that you may fear the Lord your God and keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command you and your sons and your grandson and all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. Therefore, hear, O Israel, be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you, a land flowing with milk and honey. I'm going to speak to us for just a few moments under the caption, possess the land, possess the land. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this your written word we thank you for bringing us here together as a community of faith and we pray now that as we share in this moment that you would take this your written word through me the spoken word that it may become a living and transforming word in all of our hearts and minds we pray in jesus name amen marcus garvey wrote a people without the knowledge of their past history origin and culture is like a tree without roots. A day like today as we celebrate the diamond anniversary of uh, Jamaica's independence from colonial rule and tyranny reminds us of the importance of celebrating very much uniquely who we are as a people. It is said that uh, at its height, the empire had some 65 uh, countries that were uh, colonized and under British rule and gained independence uh, in the uh, course of a century. And as we found, uh, as we are reminded today, uh, 60 years ago on this very day, uh, Jamaica gained its independence. We were educated in the introduction so beautifully that before we could uh, recognize independence, there was emancipation. And how interestingly and uniquely then that emancipation on August 1st and independence come in a week, as it were, almost to uh, scream at us and to remind us of just how thankful, how grateful we ought to be as the people of God. Why? Because we know that while the Jesus broke the chains uh, over 2,000 years ago, the chains of bondage, of slavery, the chains of segregation and separation continued uh, to be rattled. We continue to be bound and tied up. And we are thankful today that in the context of our freedom as Jamaicans, the context of our freedom as people of the empire, we are grateful that those chains have gone. But we also recognize that there are still chains that bind us. There are societal uh, chains, there are systemic chains, there are psychological chains. And so while we celebrate today, we celebrate with the recognition that while on paper all are free, we recognize that we live in a world and even in a country in which people are still enslaved and still bound. And it is the responsibility of the church, let me say it as I have the mic and you don't, it is the responsibility of the church to, to practice the ministry of liberation and reconciliation because as Christ has set us free, as Christ has given us the opportunity to walk in freedom and prosperity and opportunity, the church and the people of God must not rest until those opportunities are available to all. Now I know that there are some of you who are super spiritual and righteous and holy and we praise God for you that want to uh, contextualize the words of Jesus in Luke 4 and speak simply of liberation being a spiritual matter. But if we really understand the, men, the ministry and the message of Jesus, we would understand that Jesus sought to speak against those social shackles that would enslave people because we recognize that it's difficult to say to somebody, God bless you, go on your way and be well, if their cupboards are empty, if their children are incarcerated, if their housing is not, I don't hear anybody, is not up to scratch, if their health care isn't right, 
And so we recognize that in a very unique way, just as Sam Sharp and Paul Bogle and all of those who fought for the liberation of slaves understood that their spiritual responsibility was also to ensure that those who were in chains could be set free. And so it's important for us as we uh, dress ourselves on this afternoon, as we celebrate uh, independence and all that that means to us in the Jamaican diaspora, that we recognize that there still lies with us a responsibility. Now, I'm fascinated as I read scripture to see how much of the history of scripture uh, finds its way into our everyday lives. In fact, the wise man Solomon declared there is nothing new under the sun. And so as we read by way of our introduction in our text, we see and we read what is known as the, 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 the Shema, the, the words uh, in Hebrew, the words to Israel as they were entering into the land that God had promised, the land that was flowing with milk and honey. And God declared that as the people enter in, as they navigate this new space, they would do so with a recognition, hear me now church, that they had a responsibility uh, to the community of faith to ensure that everything that represented the nature and the character of God would be continued in a new land. Mm, I know it's kind of quiet now because, you know, we, we have moved uh, into the, the, the land of the free and the home of the brave. In, in God we trust and we have the trappings of success for many of us. And so perhaps we have forgotten. And days like today help us to remember just where we have come from. That's why I, I, I'm so thrilled to know that we can sing those redemption songs. Uh, we can celebrate and remember uh, where we have come from. I know that we can still do the hymns and the choral uh, anthems and all of those things, but we ought to be able to lift up our hands and praise the Lord because we can declare without a shadow of a doubt that if it had not been for the Lord on our side. I, I know some of you are too cute to say it, but let me declare it because I know my parents came from Jamaica in into one room and they left from that one room and had a rented home and then they bought a home and they left from that home and went back to Jamaica and built a home. So I know if it had not been for the Lord on their side, I, I know that my dad, he couldn't read but he found a job and he worked hard and, and he was able to provide not only for himself and for his family but for other families. Bless God. I understand if it had not been for the Lord on our side. Some of us know we, we did not have shoes on our feet and now we have a closet full of shoes we only had one suit or one dress and now we have choice we did not have anywhere to lay our head and now we have options i want to declare on today that god has been faithful to us we may not have everything that we desire, but as we look back over our life as people of the diaspora, we can say that God has been good. That's why it's so important for us to celebrate. You know, you know, we, we make sure, we make sure and I make sure that I don't just go to the nice resort and where the air conditioning is, but I, when I'm going to Jamaica, I have to touch yard. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I understand, I understand. You know, some of you are a little cute. You, you can't survive a minute without AC. But understand the, the, the words the words of God to Moses and to Moses to the people is that the children should be reminded of where they have come from. The children should be reminded of the struggles and the stress and the strain. And all of that is so that we can give God glory. Have you ever thought for a moment 
Incidentally, incidentally, just for those who perhaps don't quite understand the context and our representatives can help us here, there are approximately two million uh, persons in the Jamaican diaspora worldwide. One, about one million, 1 1.3 million persons who were born and then others who claim that heritage. Amen, somebody. <laughs> of that number, there is about one million, 1.1 million residing in the United States. Uh, and of that number, a significant number, this, Florida is the second largest population of Jamaicans in the United States after New York. Broward County is the greatest concentration. Am, am I right? Right here in Broward. And between Lauder Hill and Lauderdale Lakes, those two cities have the most Jamaican population in the state of Florida. J just so we understand the context. And that is why, hear me now church, and I don't want to labor too long on this, there's more we want to say in the text. That is why it is important for us to recognize that as a community of faith, we celebrate the experiences of those around us. Think about it for a moment. 300,000 those of Jamaican heritage are here in Florida. There are also 300,000 in Canada. Whether hot or cold, we are there. Think about the temperature differences between some parts in Canada. Just say Canada, doesn't matter where. Cool! but because of a desire for a better life. Many of you started up north and came down south. And all because of the goodness and the mercy of God. Yes. Truth be told, I say it, my father could just sign his name but his son went to college his sons went to college my brother has his own business now working for the UK government all from a Jamaican who worked in a factory who could barely read and write and so when we tell our story of the struggle we are not praising ourselves, but we are glorifying God. For it is in him that we live and move and have our being. We remember it is the Lord our God who gives us power to get wealth. His blessings are new every single morning. And so then, with that framework of understanding of the need for celebration and thanksgiving, we consider then the responsibility of those of us who are in foreign. Now I'm sure that if you were like some of, some of you will be like my parents who came to the UK with a plan to return. But you know once you have children and those children grow up, you start worrying about grandchildren and before you know it, 30 or 40 years have passed. And so perhaps we have to reframe our mind and thinking. This is now where we live. No, there is nowhere better than yard, but we are here now. And so what does God expect of us? Well, the text is clear. The text tells us that God has a primary responsibility, and that is that we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, and with all our strength. The strength for emancipation, and the strength for independence, and amidst, as the Governor General has said, all of the challenges that exist in Jamaica presently, 
The strength for that came primarily through the church and people of faith. It was the simple faith, the prayer life, the commitment to God's word that enabled our four parents to navigate times of oppression, segregation, separation, and brutality and emerge victorious. Now, I know that there are problems and I, I know that some will blame it on JLP and some will blame it on my, well, well let me not say my party, but, but PNP. I, I, I'm not going to get into that on today. No, no war, no division, no division, right? Not going to get into that today. But what we do know is central to the experience of Jamaicans and Caribbeans has been their faith. And if we are going to continue the ministry and work of God in foreign, we must cling to our faith. Now I know that we, we understand that there are differences in context, but one thing is clear. We must have a love for God that transcends everything else. Now you say amen. But love for God means that we have to have time with God. Sometimes we have confused the in God we trust on the back of the dollar bill. And we think that the dollar bill means that we have faith. No, 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 no. Our faith comes to us and the strength comes to work because it is God that wakes us up in the morning. It is God that starts us on our way. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The spirit of Jamaica, the spirit of emancipation and independence is at, as has at its core a love for God. Secondly, it has at its core a love for those who God created. This dual commitment is what will enable us to realize success in the future or conversely will lead to a lack of progress for us as a people. Faith has always been central. Conviction that this world and our existence in this world is bigger than us has always been part of our experience. When my parents moved to the UK, incidentally, there are some uh, three, four hundred thousand in the UK from the Jamaican diaspora. When my parents moved to the UK, they came to a community of one or two persons who owned a home, who rented out rooms in that home so that others might come there. Persons got a job. They were able to move out and other people moved in. And there was a sense that we were all people together. Some were Adventists. Some were Pentecostal. Some were Poco but But... Sorry, revivalist, sorry, sorry. But we were all one people. Now I understand and I want to be very careful so you understand. I don't want anyone to get nervous here. We, we understand and we can still celebrate that the largest Protestant denomination and the largest denomination in Jamaica is Seventh Adventist. Yes, we understand that. Praise God for that. And for the proclamation of that message. 
But regardless of our denominational affiliation, we uniquely are one people. And we care about each other, whether they are part of our fellowship or not. Because I understand, and let me be very careful to say this, that, that, that there, are, there are some great things about us. But one of the things that we struggle with sometimes is if they, if they, are, not, if they are not, God help me, if they are not SDA, then we don't want to know. If they don't receive the Bible study and get baptized, we don't want to help. But we must understand that God has placed us on this earth to lift up those who are broken, to set the captives free, to let those who are bruised know that Jesus makes all the difference. And so part of our heritage is our care and consideration for others, both as Christians and as Jamaicans. Now, I mean, you know, dumpling may be different, some with sugar, some with salt. Porridge may be different, veggie meat may be different, <laughs> but we're one people! Secondly, thirdly, excuse me, very careful now, the text was read, we must teach our children. We must teach our children. Fathers, we have a responsibility as spiritual leaders to teach our children. This week, my daughter and I, we, we went dress shopping. We were trying to find something for service today and if you have if you're a mother or you're a father who goes shopping with your teenage daughters you will know that there is very little out there that is remotely suitable for church now i used to i used to i used to think that people were just sometimes reckless in what they chose and they just went out and bought whatever they liked. But after three days of looking, trying on, taking on, uh, but listen, I have more things to return than what we, I have space on my card for. Understand that our responsibility as parents and those who have children under our influence is to so be connected with our children and those who are around us that the values of the word and the values of our culture are embodied in their mind and they understand that while the, the, the natures and the characters and the behaviors around them in this land of foreign is like that, they can still walk a certain way. But unfortunately, it's not happening. Because some of us are not doing our job at home. Some of us don't want anybody to talk to our picnic, excuse me, our children. There was a collective understanding that your child is my child, is our child. Now understand, understand, this is not to mean that we treat them anyhow, but it understands that as a place of love and unity and fellowship, we have a collective responsibility to train them and teach them and bind it on their minds and on their hearts when they lie down and when they lie, uh, rise up. Why? Because Netflix and TikTok and Instagram is teaching them
And so we have to do our part. So we have a responsibility in our community. We have a responsibility in our family. We have a responsibility to our God. The next, if the Lord does not come, decade or two in this world, we have no idea the direction that it will go. But one thing we can be assured of is it's not going to get better. We are behind enemy lines, brothers and sisters. We are living in a world that is becoming increasingly godless and irreligious. And the only thing that is preventing us from free fall into moral oblivion is the people of God who reflect the character of Christ. And I'm not talking about names on a church membership role. I'm talking about a love for God that is so sincere and committed that whatever Jesus espoused in his life, that is what we are determined to do. The text says, I'm closing, that this can be prosperity. Spiritual prosperity is possible. Personal prosperity is possible. If you keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes. But if not, destruction, dismay, and a dismantling of our values will take place because the heathen surrounds and is determined to bring about their ungodly agenda in the lives of our children and our families. Now, I want to be careful here to say we denigrate nobody. But what we understand is that there is a cosmic conflict between good and evil. And we are called as the people of God to reflect the character of Christ. To live for him in our homes, in our church, and in the community. It was 1988, we were heading to Jamaica for the first time flew on Continental Airlines and back then when you traveled across the Atlantic you only if you had good good money you could take that direct air Jamaica flight we didn't have that good good money we just had money and so we flew in via Miami didn't know that I'd end up here that's amazing how God is and when we landed here first time in the US just a teenager, my eyes were opened. I was only in the airport, you know, but when I went back to the UK, I told people I went to America and Jamaica. <laughs> oh, I tell you, not much has changed anyway. They had a printout, and the printout said, things you can do in Miami, because we had a long layover. It was like, no, almost like half a day. You know, that's when you get the cheap, cheap ticket, right? The longer layover. And when I went to my mom, I said, Mom, we can do this thing. We can go out into Miami and we can do all of this, catch a bus and go downtown. And, and, we, and it was so exciting. I said, look, long list. You can do all of these things. And my mom said, you're not going anywhere. I said, why? We've got like eight hours. We're going to be stuck in the airport for eight hours. She said, Miami is not our final destination. We are only passing through here, son. 
and we cannot have all the fun that we want to have and miss the flight and getting to our destination so we're going to stay put we're going to stay together and we're going to make sure that we reach our final destination and i want to suggest to us that that as the people we need to stay put we need to stay together and make sure we reach our final destination we will have disagreements here and there disagreements about worship and disagreements about dress and disagreements about diet and disagreements about colors and all of those things but we gotta stay put we gotta stay together to reach our destination we may have young people's music and old people may like different songs and we may have things of how we used to have it back then and we gotta figure all of that stuff out but but we gotta stay put we gotta stay together and we've got to reach our destination yes i understand that we may like some to wear suit and tie and some feel more comfortable without a jacket and some may like the music a little not so loud and some may like the piano and the organ but whatever it is we gotta stay put we gotta stay together and we have to reach our destination because there are people outside of these walls brothers and sisters who do not know the difference that Jesus can make in their life and we're not simply here to be large and in charge in foreign. That's not why God brought us here. The children of Israel, the promise to Abraham was that through the blessing of Abraham and his descendants, the nations would be blessed. And so my blessing is for the blessing of not just me, but those around me spiritually, socially, financially, educationally, intellectually. I'm blessed so that others can be blessed. And so as I close on today, I want to challenge us that as we look back with pride and thankfulness the faithfulness of God that we also look forward with anticipation as to what he can do you know the truth is that foreign has not been sweet for all of us truth of the matter is for some of us we rue the day that we came to this country for some of us our most painful moments have been here in these United States and that's why we need each other we need to stay close to each other and to encourage each other truth is for most of us there is no turning back we go back home and nobody knows us the place where we used to live is changed and and so sometimes we found ourselves like in a strange land not quite there and not quite here but the good news is that God wants to set up a kingdom in our hearts so that when he comes we will inherit his kingdom you see the truth be told there, there are some people who sent money back home to build a house and when they went back to see the house there was nothing there but a few blocks truth is many people left good stuff back home and came here thinking they would make it better and it's worse here uh, than it was back there but we have a home in that kingdom and uh, we've got a home in that kingdom that's good news and so while everything down here may not be straight if we can trust in God if we can cling to God if we can allow our lives to be a blessing to others even though it may not be perfect we are preparing ourselves for the kingdom and I can guarantee you you will not be disappointed 
And so, as I appeal to us today, what is it that God wants you to do in this season of your life? You may think you don't have much, but we're used to not having much and watch God bless it. So don't be concerned about the little that you have. Just put it in God's hands and watch him bless it. You have a phone, you can text somebody. You have a car, you can give somebody a ride. You have some food in your cupboard, you can bless somebody. You have a business, you can employ somebody. God has put us here in this diaspora to possess the land. Not for our glory, but for his glory. As the praise team comes, you know, many times we we delay, we put off, we push back the presence and power of our God in our lives for some future moment. God is calling us to a transformed life, to a life of faith and a life of devotion. And yet for some of us, we have either become overwhelmed by the nation that we live in or frustrated and disappointed by what we have left behind. But I believe on today, the better days are ahead of us as a community, as a church, as a people as we trust in God and so as you listen to the words of this song just take a moment to think about what God is saying to you about your new season today we celebrate a special milestone but the milestone of a nation is represented really effectively by its people and so what God wants to do in our heart is just as great as what he has done in the lives and experiences of those who have gone before us. And just as Sam Sharp and Paul Bogle and Gordon did what they did, so we today can be liberators. We today can be chain breakers. But for that to happen, we ourselves must be set free. So today you want to say Lord I want to thank you that I've come this far by faith I want to just stand to my feet and say Lord I'm grateful for the way that you have blessed my life in spite of all of the challenges in spite of all of the setbacks in spite of all the disappointments Lord I am willing I am desiring to be used by you to bless somebody to realize the power of the gospel in my life for your glory I don't have all the answers I don't know everything but what I am determined to do is to not turn around I'm not going to turn back I'm not going to give up 
because I've come too far to turn back now. Today there's somebody in the house of God. Maybe you're a guest, you're watching online, you're also here in the building. You've been worshiping with us and you just want to say, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to make a decision to follow Jesus all the way. I want to be part of this great gospel message. I, I know I have some things I need to figure out, but today I am saying, Lord, by your grace, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching. Lord, by your grace, I want to serve you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind and with all my strength. You're here. You just want to raise your hand. God bless you. You want to raise your hand and say, Lord, today I give myself to you. I'm grateful for all that you have done and for all that you could do. Lord, I give myself to you. God bless you. God bless you. Father in heaven, we thank you today that we can stand here and declare we have come this far by faith. Lord, there have been trials and crosses in our way. But we can declare, Lord, though the battle has been hot, the victory has been sweet. And we also know, Lord, that you have a victory for us in our lives and ultimately when you come in your kingdom. So Lord, I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice today who wants to possess the land of spiritual renewal. They recognize, Lord, that they have lost their way spiritually and it is their desire that you may rekindle within them a unction to serve you and to serve others by your grace and power. Bless them and seal that decision today, Lord. Father, there are others of us who recognize that we have become caught up and consumed with just trying to survive here in these United States. But we recognize that our lives are bigger than us. And we want to be a channel of your peace, Lord, in this community to bless somebody, to lift somebody up. Granted for us, Lord. We praise for our community of faith. We pray for our community here in the city of Lord Hill and the surrounding cities that you would cover them. And we pray also for our civic leaders as they navigate the needs of our community that you would grant them wisdom and that we would play our part. And so we thank you, Lord, for who you are and for all that you have done, for the, the many blessings that you pour out on us. May we, Lord, possess all that you have for us both here and ultimately when you come in your kingdom. May this be our experience and our determination. By your grace and through your power, we pray with thanksgiving, let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen and Amen. Please just be seated for a moment. We're just going to ask our praise team to just hold it right there. We have a few elements that will close out, but before we do, I want to just express uh, our thanks for... Uh, the first part of our day, our Sabbath school uh, leadership, Sister Bins and her team, the whole Sabbath school team for their tremendous work. Uh, and also for our day coordinator, the coordinator of our day, Elder Marlene Hunt. Where is, where is Elder Hunt? Where is she? Where is she? All right, let's put our hands together. We want to thank God for her. She has been just so diligent in making today so special. And uh, we are so grateful. We are so grateful to her. Once again, want to thank you for your presence here. I know there are some closing items, um, but truth is I don't have my glasses, so I can't really see. Oh, is, is them this? Okay, sorry. Thank you. Blessings. All right. So thank you so much. We're going to have the closing elements. Elder Hunt, thank you so much. Let's put our hands together. We want to say thank you so much for all that you have done. We know it's been a blessing and all have worked together as a team. There are some closing elements. I'll step right off the stage and... Uh, we'll continue with those as we go. Thank you, Elder. Thank you. Let us stand and um, bow our heads for the benediction. Let us pray. Oh, Father God, your word has been clear. And we thank you, dear Lord, for that word that you have put forth through your servant, Pastor Gordon. Father, hitherto you have brought us. Yes. And as we are here, Lord, focusing on 60 years of emancipation from 
colonial rule, we are most so thankful, dear God, for over 2,000 years that you have put that plan in place that liberate us from the shackles and the tyranny of sin. And so we pray, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit will dwell in our heart, that we will continue to hold on to these truths, that you have liberated us and we have a responsibility, dear God, to hold forward to that which you have done. We pray, O oh Father, that as your word has gone forth, that it may read the heart of each and every one and that we will apply ourselves unto wisdom and that we will make our calling and election sure from today on so that we can be kingdom, children of your kingdom. Bless us all as we depart from each other and may the Holy Spirit be with us as we go. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
Y this afternoon will be in person at 6 p.m. The celebration continues. Please come back for AY at 6 p.m. Thank you.